Hello and welcome back. So if you're just tuning in for the first time um, to this channel, uh, my name is Sherry and I am fairly new to all of this, uh, including making these videos. So uh, I hope you like this one. If you do, give me a thumbs up. And if you would like to subscribe, hit the subscribe button and that way you won't miss anything. <clears throat> Today I wanted to do a video that's going to uh, kind of probably reveal a little too much of my crazy but I didn't get any sleep last night and my husband this morning said you didn't sleep last night and I said no nah, I just had one of those nights again where my brain turned on and I had all these ideas and I just couldn't get back to sleep so I thought the best thing for me to do is uh, to go ahead and do a video so that I don't forget all my ideas and get you to thinking too in case you want to craft along with me when I start a new series. So that's what my idea is. Now the one that I'm working on currently, I promise I will finish it before I get really going on the new one. Um, and you, you'll know where we left off uh, was I had finished this section and I, now I'm gonna work on the front. So I am working on it. I wanted to pull it out here just so you can see I really am. And I'm gonna um, actually make a different type of recess uh, that I'll show in the next video when I would do a video about this book. So if you are brand new to my channel and you wanna kinda of catch up where we are, uh, this series is the um, Altered Book Keepsake Journal. So you can start from the beginning of this one and kinda of get caught up before I finish it. And then you can move on with me to my new project that I'm so excited about. So um, I wanted to share what it was so that you can kind of get your creativity flowing and all that too. And then I'm gonna take you deep into a little show and tell um, about some of the recycling things that I do. So if you know me and followed me for even just this short time, you may have figured out I really like to uh, recycle. I just mention it a lot. So um, because the last couple of projects I have done I have been working on uh, altered books. I end up with all of this paper. I have a whole pile over there of um, book pages that have been torn out of books, uh, you know, different ones. And uh, when I cut out those little recesses, I end up with these little smaller pieces. So I have piles and piles of it. And you know, they're different colors even. This is an older book, so it's already kind of aged and then the lighter one. So I, I have so much of this, I, I don't wanna waste it. I want to do something with it. And because I've been using the last couple of books that I've done, I've used paper packs and tried to stay in that theme. I wanted to really switch it up and recycle some stuff because uh, you know, I'm learning about all of this and what's the difference between an altered book and a junk journal and all that kind of thing. And so I kind of, I like to blend the two, but in this case, I really want to just recycle. So that's my idea. I want, I like to challenge myself too. So, um, for this challenge, I wanted to do a book where I'm only allowed to use book page paper, recycled book page paper. So that's where I'm starting. And you can alter it in any way you want, paint, inks, sew on it, cut it up, punches, layer it, mixed media, anything, you know, anything like that that you can think of, alter it in any way you want, but you can only use book page paper. No magazines, no, um, paper packs, no digi prints, none of that stuff, just book paper. So like I said, you could do whatever you want to color it, whatever you want to, to do to it. Now, the one caveat I will say is I used old book page to make paper. So because it's still the same thing, I've just altered it. So I'm gonna maybe use some of this and you can do that to make some paper, but just use book page paper. Now. When I made my paper, it is pretty brittle. It's, it's, this was with really old books. So, you know, if I added like some new paper, I think it might be different. This is almost feels like fabric. And it's probably because the old book paper had a lot of cotton in it or something, I don't know. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm challenging you to do the same thing, um, but you'll see where you take it. So that's kind of my idea. I want to, you know, make little parts and pieces and things um, probably while I'm still working on the other project because it's going to maybe take me a while. I have a lot of ideas. 
rolling around in there. And so I want to maybe do some things ahead of time just because I like to work on more than one project at a time. So actually on that thought, um, in the evenings I knit. I have an Etsy shop where I sell all my knitted stuff. And if you saw my workshop, you would just laugh. But I have probably a hundred-ish um, knitted items in my Etsy shop. And I probably have a good another 50 or so that I don't even have um, listed yet. And so I thought, well, I've got to stop knitting. I've got to start doing something else in the evenings and I can't just sit and watch TV. So I started, I'd been seeing these little things about slow stitching. And so I don't know if you know what slow stitching is or not, but I looked, when I'd see it, I'd, I'd see it and think, that's embroidery. I used to embroider. I've got, uh, you know, all this stuff that I had for 30 years, 35 years ago, I was doing a lot of cross stitch. So I have all these, all this stuff already. So I thought, well, I'm gonna pull out my stuff and I like to go to bookstores with my husband when we go to the big city, which in our case is Reno. We always go to the bookstore and I had picked this book up recently um, of Cruel Embroidery. Just, you know, I, I had all the stitches in my head that I learned as a kid, um, the simple ones, but I thought it might be fun to learn some more elaborate things because I love embroidering on my jeans and that kind of stuff too. So I had picked this up and I really hadn't looked at it. So I pulled it out the other night and I started doing some slow stitching on uh, some book page. And that was kind of, I kind of already had started tossing this book page idea a couple of days ago in my head. And then last night it just went nuts in my sleep. So um, anyway, I had started doing this one. This one, I had actually put a little piece of this scrim fabric that I have. I wasn't sure how extensive I was going to get on my embroidery, how detailed. And when you pierce paper, it perforates it. And so I was afraid if, I, if my holes were too close together that it might just um, break through the paper. So for this one, I used some of this scrim. You can use muslin or anything interfacing, you know, the iron-on kind, that kind of stuff. I'm going to probably try to do some of that too, just for patterns that I know might need a little more strength in the paper. Um, and then, of course, I folded this over too, and I thought, well, even if I do just two layers of paper and glue it together, that that could work too. So I'm doing some experiments. This one I just folded. I didn't even glue it together. I just I just doubled it over and I thought I would just start practicing doing some of the stitches in that book and I really like this one. It's called a spider web and it's, um, it looks like a little flower but it's really fun to do. So I'm just kind of playing around on scraps and I thought I'll do a bunch of these and I can incorporate these in my book. Um, you know, just different things. So that's one idea to start thinking about. Um, and I've seen some really neat uh, kind of collage mixed media things with slow stitching. And you can do that with just book page. You know, I think just doing different shapes and adding things in. In fact, one of the pieces, I'll show this a little closer. This little blue part here, if you can see that, is actually my paper that I made. And then I just used a little, um, the little reinforcement punch and made like a little donut. And it, it, it punched okay. It's um, because this, this, paper is really, you know, you don't really hear it click. Oops, I didn't even get the whole thing in there. Um, you don't really hear it click because it's pretty soft. It's almost like fabric, like I said. But, but I did get out a little donut. And then that way I used that just as kind of a little, um, I put it on the paper and then just stitched it to the paper. So that's just, you know, you're going to come up with all kinds of ideas, but try to think outside the box. I mean, that's kind of the whole fun of this. So um, that's one thing I, that I kind of started working on, and who knows where all that will go. Um, but embroidering on things is good. And then one thing that I will probably also use with my slow stitching is um, since I'm not gonna let myself use any other kind of paper, I I save these because if you saw my button video, uh, making buttons out of recycled materials, uh, I was using this for texture on some of them and I just, it's just my potato bag. Um, but this is an avocado bag and it also is a neat weave. But these, these things, you know, because of the texture sewn into my little cuties bag, sewn into the 
onto the book page just for texture or glue it on, you know, just for extra texture. Think mixed media. And so I'm gonna use some of that. And then um, I will let myself use, because it's also recycling, I save food things. And so I'm gonna, just to make them thicker, like if I'm gonna make a little booklet or something, um, I want it to be a little heavier, or maybe I'm gonna make those little um, round closures or something, you know, for like uh, coin envelopes, then I might want it to be a little thicker. So I'm gonna let myself use this. And I don't know what I'm gonna do for the cover. I might do, you know, something handmade, or I do have an old book that I've already gutted and started to repair. I could maybe use that, or I have just some covers, you know, that I could just do two covers and not do um, not do a, a binding, wide binding here, I don't know. Or I can just take a new old book and do an altered book, which I kind of am leaning to that just because I've been doing these altered books and I, I like that. That way I can leave some pages in, take some pages out. Um, and I'd already started this one, but I could use this, I suppose. It just has some burlap on it, but I haven't finished the cover. So I can either use this one or start a new one. We'll see. But that's just to give you some ideas to get started. And as far as other things, um, basically I wanted to... Uh, if you know the other things that I do, like knitting, obviously, um, I like to use every scrap. And I kind of wanted to do a little show and tell um, with the other things that I do and how I kind of, I'll call it reduce and reuse because every time you make something, you're, there's some kind of scrap and then you make something out of that, but then you still have some scrap. So I'm calling that reducing. So when I did the knitting, um, I make neck warmers and that kind of thing. And this was, this is years and years old. You can see it's kind of getting that worn look, but I had all my scraps. Um, I used to sit by the fireplace and uh, knit, and then I would end up with all these little balls of random bits and pieces. And at the time I had made a Christmas tree shaped thing, probably about three feet tall, out of an old rusty bed springs. So I made kind of like wreaths and, Anyway, it made these little areas that I could plop my balls of yarn. So it was really cute sitting by the fireplace and I, I sold it so I don't have it anymore. But um, that was just a thing that I did with all these balls of yarn. Well, then I didn't have the tree anymore. So I took the balls and I just, I sold the tree with the balls, I think with a bunch of balls, but you know, I still knit. So I always had lots of leftovers. So I had made this scarf and I really liked, um, different types of yarn. So it, it got this naturally wavy pattern in it. And I'm just showing you these things because it'll just inspire you for shape maybe and color and that kind of thing to get your juices flowing for your book because you're gonna have to really think of other creative things because you're just using book page. So how can you transform that and make it look different? So you can do that with color, pattern. So, you know, stripes, but stripes that are wavy, that kind of thing. So I went from making this one to then thought, well, I'll make one that's not wavy. So um, I used different yarns still, but tried to keep ones that were mostly the same thickness so that they it was more straight. And this one, I should have for sale on my spot, but I haven't put it on there yet in my Etsy shop, but um, that one will be on there someday. And then this one I do make, I've made a few of these and sold. This is all just, in fact, this one is on my Etsy shop. Um, it might have expired, so I need to look and see. I've started, I used to manually uh, renew things just to keep uh, rotating what I had on there, but now I just automatically do it because I have so many things. But this one I called my Josephina scarf because it was like Joseph's coat only. I made it, I'm a girl, so I called it Josephina. But um, anyway, it's just with homespun yarn, so it's all the same weight yarn in same texture, but just different colors. So my favorite color is the rainbow. So I always like lots of color in my little accessory thing. So that's that, um, just to give you ideas of mixing colors. And then to reduce, so I, I would be out of um, those scraps, but I'd still have, you know, when, you, when you're knitting, you always have little tails at the end, and especially when you're doing those striped scarves, because 
every row, you know, every row you're doing a hidden knot, a magic knot they call it, and you're cutting, you have tails everywhere. So I had all those little scraps and I don't want to waste that because I just love the colors. So I would get those and I would tie them together even if they were really short. And then it was just like a skinny and different weights and all that. So I braided them or twisted them. So these are all just braided. And I left the tied ends on because I just kind of like that. So I end up with balls of this. I've actually taken these and I couldn't find my sample, but I've actually taken this and knitted with this then. And that makes like nice little hot pads and that kind of thing. So that was another. So, you know, whenever you have, if you knit, whenever you have scraps, you know, I just, I keep them. And the reason I thought of all this knitting stuff for my book project that I want to do is that I want to start saving these little scraps again and make tiny little tassels and pom-poms for my book, I think. So that's just another idea. That would be a good closure maybe for a book. And then I also do some sewing and I have scraps from that too. So one thing I also make is <clears throat> my husband used to uh, wear shirts like this to work all the time. And then he retired and doesn't wear these anymore. So I've had a ton of these and I, I finally got to where I, I did all his shirts. And now um, when I need shirts to make these aprons, I go to garage sales or Goodwill or whatever and get them and wash them and then make these cute little aprons out of them. But then you have stuff left over from these too. So the scraps from those, I I take all the, I have big scraps that I'm, I'm, I could use for some of my, um, the little uh, slow sewing, uh, slow stitching to make cute little, you know, patchworky things. I could use some of that because that's recycling. And then um, when I have even tinier scraps, yes, I save those too. And those I turn into like little crazy quilt kind of strips. So I have these, I can use these for slow stitching too, or make like bands and stuff, cut these up. So I have that I can use, little scraps. And then I also um, actually, I, I make, I don't have one to show you, but I make these things called junkin sacks with uh, leftover blue jeans, outgrown holy ones, whatever. And two things I do with the leftovers of that is I have gone like crazy crazy. And this is huge. I can't even show you the whole thing because it's it's ginormous. But I'm making like a big, um, like a picnic blanket. Actually, when I started this, I used to do a lot of upholstery um, seat cushions and stuff. And I thought it'd be really fun to do a chair um, and upholster it in this. And I just never got... I never got enough to do a whole chair, so it's probably going to end up a picnic blanket, but I don't know. I may get into it again. My my workshop um, where I can do big, messy things and woodworking and stuff is now finished, so who knows? I could get back into that, too, in my spare time. The other thing that I make, and I do this with shirts, the shirts, the, uh, the seams that are double-stitched, I cut those off, and you have all these nice little strips. I do the same thing with the blue jeans. And what I've made with those in the past is little coasters. So I just take, this is the shirting. It started out with a little bit of blue jean in there. And then I just go around and around. And to do that, I have all of this tape. Um, it, I actually didn't use this one. This is a double stick one that has the um, peel off part. But Scotch brand, I have um, a bunch of double stick tape of that one that is um, kind of on a roll like that. But I used it for lampshade, making sh lampshades, because um, it was the right width and everything and really sticky. So that's what I use for this. You could use glue, but um, I just rolled them around and around and around. And so they're, these aren't quite done. I've done them bigger. You just add the next one on here, you know, and then it kind of changes the color too. So it makes that stripy look. So I just go around and around and around. And I use these for trivets, you know, put them under plants or use them for your hot pads, that kind of thing. So you, this is all good, good stuff to save. I'm not sure if I'll be able to use this in the book, but I don't know. You never know. So just more things to think about recycling. And then the other thing, like I said, I sew. Um, I used to do some decorating. Um, had a little hobby decorating business. And... So I, I was always using gorgeous fabrics and trims for my, I did a lot of like master bedroom bedding and draperies and that kind of stuff. And like I said, I did some upholstery. So I have just all these gorgeous fabrics. 
so I figured, well, they were beautiful when they were a big piece, so they're gonna be beautiful. Even these little scraps, I just cannot throw them away. Some of them are very expensive fabrics. So I would just sew them together and I kind of ended up with two patterns that were kind of a signature thing for me um, where I did this Harlequin pattern and I have upholstered furniture with this. Uh, I do the, uh, sew them all together and then I use interfacing that you iron on in the back to kind of make it all one cohesive piece and not so messy uh, and then turn them into pillows or upholstery. And it makes them more durable. This one, actually, I don't think, this was this was one of my first ones and I didn't line it with the inner facing on it. And so I actually need to stitch that up. But if I would have, it would have held everything, kind of glued it all together. And which is what I did once I got to doing these. This was a, a big signature one of mine, these round pillows. And um, I just would do like a pizza shape of all these pieces and I've made a ton of these, so I, I did save some for myself because they remind me of all the different jobs that I have, have done, and I just love these, so that's another thing. And those, you know, that idea, even though those are large and thicker fabrics, that same idea you can use in, in your journaling and stuff too, so I may do some of that kind of thing. The other crazy place I go is jewelry. And again, I don't want to waste anything. So uh, one thing that I have made is um, I will take like, I'll have like maybe a little tray or something when I'm be doing beading and stuff falls on the floor or gets on my table somewhere crazy. And I end up with random uh, beads that I didn't get back in their original little container. I keep stuff in like these little things. And so I, I end up with this little tray of random stuff. So I would make these like, I call them like collage free. I call these freestyle bracelets on my website, but it's just kind of these, obviously I, I pulled out of their bins, but I always would have these little sections of just the random beads that um, didn't get put back in their little bins. And I just love these. They're just little wrap bracelets. Um, but they're kind of, a, that, again, a rainbow of color and collage things. This tag is actually, this one says, life is about creating yourself. And this is actually, I think from Tim Holtz stuff, um, before I even started doing um, the paper craft and mixed media, they're flat when you buy them, but I just put them on a, uh, a uh, bracelet, um, where's my word? I can't think of my word. Um, uh, anyway, mandrel, and then just kind of hammered it to be a wrist shape so that I could make my little bracelet. So that was an, you know, easy thing you don't have to make if you want to do something like that. These little tags, uh, with words on them, I do make these, but, um, anyway, so those are just freestyle bracelets. It's with all my scraps. So even when I have, um, I keep a baggie of leather. I love working with leather. And I always have little little short pieces of leather too. Those could go in my book. Um, or I can make, you know, little tassels and stuff. So I can use some of my recycled, my little bin of extra goodies that um, didn't get used up. But all my little tiny, I'll even make like little links, like that's a leather link um, with just my little scraps of leather. So. I might do some kind of tassel -y thing like that in my book. Um, then, you know, again, reducing my my stuff, I end up with, sometimes beads are um, broken, the, they're chipped, the hole doesn't work anymore, it's too small or whatever. I save all those beads because I work in, um, in semi-precious stones, so they're all natural stones. So I take them and I just hammer them and crush them small and then I call this my confetti. So I use that um, to actually make little confetti necklaces. I call these my confetti hearts and um, I'll do them with, you know, clear, sometimes it, it, I want it to look like maybe the stones are like that's a beach or something and they're pouring out the bottom of the heart and sometimes I'll put little tassels of then the actual beads that are in there but the whole bead and it's little tassels raining down and um, so I, I, I sell a lot of these. I, they're just fun because they're just different. So I do those and then sometimes every once in a while because I make these bezels and then it's with resin, something will happen along the way and my resin will pop out of my metal. I'll, I'll be trying to manipulate it or something and it'll come out. 
I don't want to waste that either. So I like here's one that that happened to, and I just polished the edges too, and then it's still a cute little necklace. So that's going to be a necklace one day too. And then I also, since I started making those buttons, if you watched that video, um, I used the recycled. This is all punched out of a one inch punch that I do um, from the food containers and different cardboard stuff. And I just layer those to get a good thickness. And then I, in the resin, this one's not finished. It, it needs to have its many more layers and doming. But I used the same um, stones in, in one. And I think on this one, I probably, I think I ink dyed the background first, that turquoise color, before I put this on. So that's just another thing. This is another one where the bezel fell off. And this one I'll probably end up actually putting inside another larger bezel with a different stone around the edge. So this is just me showing you how I don't throw anything away. I'm going to make use of everything and recycle everything. I even took um, guitar strings um, that I have. And this part that's the wire looking part, that's actually a guitar string that I've made a bracelet. And this is also a bracelet with guitar string and then some stones um, wrapped around it too. I also have done earrings that are really cute. I love the earrings, but they're all sold at the moment, so I guess I need to make more. But they end up kind of in a, in a shape like this. I kind of do a little hoop. Similar to this is in leather, but with guitar strings. So, you know, it's just that, again, that recycling things. Um, from there, again, you know, there's scraps of wire, scraps of all kinds of stuff. So I actually take those, I can't throw those away either. Um, and I just, these are all different gauges. I just start a nest. In fact, I had a little one. Um, you know, they start out, they start out small and then I, they just kind of grow and grow and grow to big. This one I actually cut in half and I did put a little bit of, of yarn in there just to make it look like a little nest. And I, I cut it in half because I actually used, um, in one of my mixed media pages, I had made this little bird, and uh, so I wanted to actually put a dimensional nest in there, so that's the little sliver of the nest that I had cut off for my bird. So, I hope that gives you some ideas. Um, let's see, what else did I have running around here? The only other, oh, the other thing that I think it's okay to use, because it's not really paper, is um, to use, you know, I say these little acetate um, bags, to do little window things. Uh, so I'm gonna be, when I, some of these ideas I know I've shown in other videos, but when I do this book one, I'm gonna do little demo videos of all the little fun things that we're gonna put inside. So um, you might wanna hang on, save some of these uh, so that you can make little windows. And then if you work with ribbon at all, I used to make these uh, ribbon flower things. So if you've ever are familiar with yo-yos where you take a strip of fabric and then you cinch it up, you know, on either side, like, let's get a piece of ribbon and show you. Oops, these are all stitched together. So I would spend a Sunday literally um, making these just a length of, of ribbon and then sew a bunch of them. Then I cut them apart, and then they get sewn like these yo-yos. These aren't really yo-yos. These are my little flowers. Um, a yo-yo, you would stitch one side, and then you also stitch the other side, and then you flatten it out, you know, iron it. It's like that. And then you'd see them all stitched together for like a tablecloth or a blanket or something. But I, do, I would just do these with flowers. So I have made a zillion of these. That's why I still have... These are years and years old of bags where I would take these and just layer different sizes in, you know, and then put a cute little embroidered button or something on the top. And then I also would take apart, um, these were silk flowers. You just take apart silk flowers and you kind of do the same thing where you just make new little flowers. So, you know, any kind of recycling things like that that you have, or can find at garage sales or whatever. Um, I guess my point is I want to show that you can take something whether it, that you would maybe normally be tossing or um, just look at it in a different way and not waste any of it to just try to think creatively and use up every last little bit um, to make something beautiful. I, you know, and that's just where your creativity is going to come and all your great ideas. 
So I just wanted to share that with you because I didn't get any sleep last night and I thought if I maybe get this out, then like I said, I'll remember my ideas. I can go back and watch it and you can get your ideas going. And that way, when I finish that other book and get this one started, you'll have some materials saved um, and some ideas that you know you wanna work on. Um, so if you uh, uh, follow my Facebook page, I would love to see your ideas and things that you come up with using these book page ideas because you'll probably give me some ideas too. Um, I'm new at this. And I don't know if it lets you on the comments um, on these YouTube videos, I don't know if it lets you show picture, attach a picture or not. So if it, it I know it, it can let you show links. So if you do YouTube videos too and have ideas and wanna put the link there, that's fine. Um, but if you follow my Facebook page, I always put um, links when I do a video on my Facebook page. And that would be a good place when I do the link for this video I'm making right now. Um, if you go to my Facebook page and you have ideas or things or photos, you can share them there in the comments. And then um, I can kind of see what you're working on too. So um, it would be great to see what everyone comes up with. And I hope you'll join me for this series. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And it'll give you ideas of things that you can use for other journals too. It doesn't have to just be this one. I just kind of liked the idea of giving myself a challenge of working with one item. Because uh, doing something like that, it really forces your creativity a little bit more. And um, I just I think it'll be a really pretty book in the end. I, I just have this vision of how crazy it could go. So I'm looking forward to doing it. I hope you are too. So I get, I need to get to work on that other book so that I can get on this because I'm, I'm just excited about it. <clears throat> so get on with the rest of your day. Have a great one. Now go make something. Bye.